Beautiful. How's it going, everyone? You should be able to start joining. You should be able to hopefully hear us. Um, thank you all for coming and joining in. Um, can I just get people in the chat, if it's okay, please, if you could just let us know uh, whether you can hear us all okay? Yep, okay, perfect. Sounds good. Looking like everyone can hear us okay, that's great to hear. Welcome Simon, Milton, Steve and Eve, yep. Everyone's slowly filtering in. Lovely, we're gonna get started in just a couple of minutes or so. Um, we're just gonna wait one or two minutes for a couple of people to join and then we'll um, get this ball rolling. So, that should be good. Hope you're all ready to learn a little bit about masonry systems, masonry patterns. I hope everyone's having a wonderful morning wherever you are. I know that in Sydney it's been lovely and sunny, so it could be a good day to go to the beach this afternoon. Who knows? <laughs> lovely. We've got a couple more people filtering in, and then we'll um, introduce ourselves and we'll get the ball and get into it. Um, just a bit of housekeeping for everyone that's in here at the moment. Um, we've obviously got our camera on at the moment. Um, I'm going to leave that on while we introduce ourselves and we'll run through the start of the webinar. I will then turn that off uh, just because that allows the, the slides to be bigger on, on your screens. Additionally, if you want the slides to be even larger, you can actually pop out or close the chat box um, on the Demio platform, and that should enlarge the slides for you as well. Um, so just something to keep in mind. Um, but with that, with that being said, uh, it's now a couple of minutes past, and we've got a couple of introductory slides. Um, so while, while everyone starts to file in, um, I will probably start us off now so we can get into it. Um, so, my name's Jack, I'm one of our graduate engineers here at Think Brick Australia, um, and I'm part of the technical team here, so we deal with all things, you know, technical, engineering, design, um, and with me today I've got Matt. Hey everyone. Um, yep, so Matt's one of our intern engineers here as well, um, and you know, we're going to take you through um, a little bit about masonry bonds and patterns, uh, specifically looking at stack bonding um, towards the start of the presentation and moving into some more interesting proprietary patterns um, throughout the slideshow. Um, so if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to post those in the chat. Um, one of us will be monitoring that um, and we'll make sure that we answer those before, before we leave here today. Um, so I'd just like to start by doing an acknowledgement to the traditional custodians of the various lands from which all of our attendees uh, and ourselves join us today. And I'd like to pay respects to those elders past, present and emerging. So just a quick little bit about who we are at Think Brick Australia. So we are the peak body representing Australia's clay brick and paving manufacturers. So we essentially, as an industry association, want to make it easier to build in brick, block and pavers. Um, and we have a few strategies as to how we do this. So I'm sure a couple of you um, may know about Think Brick Awards that we run each year. Um, and these celebrate architectural excellence and innovation um, within the brick, concrete masonry and roof tile industries. Um, however, on top of this, we also engage with our member manufacturers through roadshows, through technical committees. Uh, but we also facilitate knowledge sharing and engagement within the industry um, by you know, having recruiting young engineers and engaging with engineers, architects, designers, like yourselves um, through programs just like this webinar to you know give a bit of an insight as to how bricks are currently being used in Australia and globally um, and where we might see this industry going as well. So just on top of that as well, um, just a little bit of a shout out, we have our Think Brick Awards Gala Lunch happening on Friday the 19th of November, where we will announce all of our winners for Think Brick Awards 2021. Um, so tune into our social media because we will be live streaming this announcement um, and it's a great great chance to see you know some of some great architectural projects um, using masonry in Australia. So again what do we offer for architects and engineers and um, people that are you know, excited about masonry? 
We have free technical manuals, free research papers, case studies, and fact sheets, um, all available for your convenience to assist you with any of your masonry designs. Um, on top of that as well, uh, as we're an industry association, we offer a free technical hotline and free technical advice um, through, our, through our technical team here if you have any questions or concerns or just want a bit of advice about a particular project you might be undertaking. Um, in terms of how we engage with our members and with our audience, we have, uh, we're very active on our social media, but you may not know we also have a podcast, our Think Group podcast where we actually engage with some famous Australian architects, um, such as the couple that you can see on the screen. And we also go through and talk with some of our engineers um, on some technical masonry topics. Um, I highly encourage you all to check it out. It's got some great insight into you know, how architects approach projects, as well as how engineers you know, look through some of the challenges of your more unique um, and innovative masonry designs. In terms of who our members are and who we represent, um, I'm sure all of you are aware of our members. Um, you know, PGH, Austral Bricks um, are our national members. And you can see here the logos of some of our uh, manufacturers, as well as some of our associate members like Ancon, Leviat, um, who make masonry proprietary systems. Um, so an abundance of knowledge and an abundance of support here through ThinkBrick um, to you know, allow architects and engineers to design the projects they envision. What do we want you to get out of this series? Obviously, we want you to make we want to make it easier to build in brick. So we want to provide our knowledge and our understanding of masonry um, and project that onto you through some great case studies and through some great architectural examples. Um, and obviously, we want to give you some technical assistance um, through any guidance you may need on projects. So. The big takeaway from this is to, you know, challenge yourself using bricks moving forward, um, but to also ask questions, you know, throughout today, um, but even after this webinar, if you still have questions, please feel free to reach out to us um, and we'll be sure to give you assistance wherever we can. So just a little bit about where we're going to go today um, in terms of what this webinar is going to cover. So firstly, Matt's going to take, take us through um, stack bonded masonry. Um, and a little bit about how we might design stack bonded walls. Um, then I'm going to take us through some more uh, innovative, some more interesting and unique masonry patterns that you might see um, around you, as well as some of the detailing involved um, with these masonry systems. In here, we also have a case study of Ivanhoe House from KUD. And then we also have a little bit on brick floors towards the end here. Um, so highly encourage you to stay and then check out um, everything that we're going to be discussing today. Um, so with that being said, I am going to palm it off to Matt. I'm going to turn our camera off so that the slides are a little bit larger for you. Um, but we will turn this back on towards the end. So you know, don't feel like you have to miss us. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Beautiful. Thank you, Jack. So on to the first slide. Stack bonding. Well, what is stack bonding? Uh, I'm sure you're all very familiar with what this is, and I can, well, I can, feel, I can put a very good bet that it's something that's very similar to that image, that diagram that you can see on your left there, where masonry units are stacked directly on top of each other, no unit overlap, and with that outstanding uh, vertical, vertical aligned perpend joint. And this is um, in direct contrast to your more ubiquitous stretcher bonded wall, uh, which has that half unit overlap, the one that everyone knows. But if we have a deeper look um, from an engineering perspective of what that is, what do the standards really say uh, about stack bonding? And so the standards actually specify that a masonry wall is stack bonded if the unit overlap is less than 50 mils or if the unit lap is less than a quarter of the unit length of the masonry unit. And so typically for a generic um, or, or a standard brick unit that is 230 by 110 by 76, um, this length is going to be uh, 57.5 mils. And for example, let's say if you have a unit overlap of 55 mils, that would be in the eyes of the standard classified as stack pointed masonry. So I'll just like to briefly talk about 
um, the types of masonry units that you can use in a stack bond. And I'm only highlighting this because in the previous architectural webinar, uh, which we highlighted here to miss uh, brick walls, we actually said that you can't use uh, cord units and frog units in these walls because of the lack of a full bed um, of mortar. Uh, but in this case, there isn't a there isn't a uh, restriction on uh, stack bonded masonry. You can use cord units if you'd like, solid units if you like, and frog units as well. Um, even on top of this, you can actually use custom shapes, uh, provided that they can be stacked safely on top of each other and in a structurally um, supported manner. Uh, and this can actually open up many avenues for added textures um, and for interesting sort of patterns in your um, masonry walls. And we're going to be talking and highlighting that in the oncoming slides. So the main structural consideration of stacked modern masonry, um, and it is sort of like a double-edged sword. You do get that striking look because of that aligned uh, vertical perpend joint. But at the same time, this opens up these types of walling systems um, to have a specific structural weakness. Uh, because of these weaker mortar joints, stack bonded masonry walls typically exhibit a much lower uh, bending capacity. Uh, and this you can imagine, um, and this is an, an example that I really like to use, um, like a bar of Cadbury chocolate, the ones with the, uh, the indentations so you can easily break off those blocks of chocolate. Uh, as you can imagine, um, when you try to bend that chocolate bar, it will almost always snap in those indented um, sections, uh, leaving you with a box of chocolate. And that's because those sections are thinner and weaker. And this is exactly the same sort of um, mechanic um, that you can see here in a stack bonded masonry wall. It would break or crack along those vertically aligned masonry um, joints. So what does the standard say and, and how can we increase this bending capacity? Well, there's been actually a lot of uh, research done um, by many universities, and these two images are from the University of Newcastle, where they sort of uh, implement reinforcement in those masonry walls as to increase the ductility and to increase the, uh, the bending capacity of these walls. Uh, and this is something that the standard highlights uh, in, and I'll, I'll briefly talk about this in the following slide. So stack bonded walls do fall within the scope of the Masonry Australian Standard AS3700. And this is basically, this diagram to your left here is basically uh, just what or where you should place your bed joint reinforcement as to increase that bending capacity for stack bonded walls. So here you can see that um, bed joint reinforcement has got to be placed uh, at every free end. So let's say like a parapet, you'd have to place um, a bed joint reinforcement just in one course away from that free end. Um, and this also applies to windows as well. So one course right above the window and one course of bed reinforcement just below the window as well. You also have to put um, bed joint reinforcement uh, within 300 millimeters of a laterally, uh, a horizontal lateral support. And also with regards to the spacing between those bed joint reinforcements, um, you would have to make sure that the spacing isn't larger than six times the width or the thickness rather of the masonry leaf. So that will typically um, leave a spacing of 600, uh, 600 mils. And again, this is just to stress that, you know, bed joint reinforcement should be placed in the top horizontal mortar joint right before the edges, um, like parapets, as I just said, um, and also in openings like doors and windows as well. So just that one course above those windows and one, um, one uh, course right below them as well. So in terms of the considerations regarding the actual reinforcement mesh that you would have to put in to reinforce that stack bonded uh, wall, uh, the bed joint reinforcement must have a thickness of at least three mils, but no less than two thirds of the mortar joint thickness. So typically because your mortar joint thickness is 10 mils, you would probably have um, a maximum thickness of around let's say six mils. 
officially 6.67, but six bills usually does the job just fine. Uh, in terms of the durability requirements as well, um, the cover that you have to provide for the bed joint reinforcing uh, or reinforcement rather is at least 15 mils. You really don't want to get that water um, and uh, will that water into your into your joints um, just in case the, uh, the the reinforcement rusts or or, or has some sort of uh, degradation to it. And also, in longer extended lengths of masonry walls, um, the mesh should also have to be lapped if there is a discontinuity, a discontinuity um, with that reinforcement. And Ancon specifies, uh, and Ancon is a a provider for masonry accessories, they specify that a minimum lap of 225 mils uh, is the requirement. So in terms of increasing the load bearing capacity for veneer stack bonded walls, you can also consider the same sort of technique that you would use in a stretcher bonded masonry wall. Uh, and that is decreasing the minimum spacing requirements for your wall size. So in accordance with the standards, um, you would typically have wall ties six, well, with a spacing of 600 mils in each direction, uh, horizontally and vertically. And this is reduced to half of that, 300 mils, in areas adjacent to corners and supports. Um, but you can always have a play around with these wall ties. Um, you can decrease them um, uh, to increase your load bearing capacity if you will. So an example of this is you can consider to lower that spacing to 400 mils in each direction um, in accordance to the New Zealand standards, or even alternatively in some international um, specifications, you can decrease that to 225 mils vertically and 600 mils horizontally. Again, the choice is up to you, um, but it's also very good to consider the constructability um, of these wall ties. If you have, let's say, one per brick, that's, that's never going to fly. You're going to be spending way too much money and it's not going to do that much more in terms of um, increasing the load bearing capacity. So just a quick summary of what I just talked about uh, with regards to structural considerations. Um, first of all, you can use any sort of masonry type that you want. There isn't a restriction to this, provided that you can stack the, uh, we can stack the stack bond, you can stack those bricks. Um, so again, cord and frog bricks can be used uh, as well as solid um, masonry units. Um, also, to increase the bending capacity of the wall, you would have to include bed joint reinforcement um, or bed joint mesh reinforcement um, into the specified locations that I mentioned earlier. And also, if you want to increase the load bearing capacity as well, um, you can also have a play around with the spacings reducing the spacings of the wall ties. Um, yeah, just to make sure that your, uh, that your wall is um, structurally adequate. So one final consideration, um, as you may or may not know, uh, concrete blocks and clay bricks are different um, in the sense that concrete blocks actually shrink over time because of the chemical reaction of concrete. Um, and clay bricks actually expand. And so typically at the interface of these two materials, provided that you put them in the same wall, you would actually have to put a slip joint just to um, dissipate any sort of stresses from that differential movement. But here in this case, or here in the stack bonding um, uh, configuration, you can actually use bed joint reinforcement as a way to sort of um, sufficiently uh, reinforce that section or dissipate that differential movement instead of using a slip joint. Uh, and this can be actually beneficial for you, especially if you're trying to hide those, um, I would say, unsightly um, joints. Um, but in terms of control joints as well, um, they must also be included, just like any other masonry um, um, wall. So onto the fun stuff. Um, the different types of stack bonding patterns that we can um, well, we can use. So the first, the first of which, which again, I'm quite sure you're all familiar with, uh, is the stretch of course stack bonded pattern, which is when the which is when the bricks are laid directly on top of each other, leaving that long stretch of face exposed. Again, visually striking. I would say fairly common, second to stretch bonded masonry, um, but it does give that 
very aesthetic tiled look. Uh, and you can see here in this project, resident KNS by Open Studio Architects, that it does give that gridded, um, very rect rectangular approach, um, or, or look rather, um, and definitely is a feel, uh, a cl clean and uh, uh, concise and precise feel. So the next type of stack bond that we can consider is the soldier core stack bond. And this is when the bricks are orientated um, to show off their soldier face. Uh, and this is used to essentially grind a sense of uh, added height to a project or to a specific masonry wall and to provide greater emphasis to the verticality of it as well. And you can see here in this project, Burke College, um, the architects, Anton Johnson architects, uh, have used this orientation just to stress and just to show off those vertical colored strips um, as part of this project. Uh, just in terms of the structural considerations, um, the bed joint mesh here would actually be the same as what I mentioned earlier. Nothing would really change, even though you have those greater spacings in between your bed joints, um, you would still have to use, or it, nothing would change essentially in terms of providing additional bed joint reinforcing uh, for these types of love walls. So on to the next um, type of stack one, and I'm pretty sure you're getting a theme here. If you orientate it again um, to show off the brick's header face, the shorter space, you can again get a different type of aesthetic and a different type of feel to your masonry project. Uh, and in this um, project, Foley uh, Park Amenities by Stanek Harding Architects, uh, Architecture and Interiors, we can clearly see that because you're, you're showing that really small and that, that low profile header face, we get this sort of clinical tiled look um, to the masonry wall. And this actually plays really well into, well, especially this, well, into this project, especially because this project is actually a public restaurant. Uh, and so it really, again, as I, as I really want to stress, it really does provide for a different feel and a different overall, overarching aesthetic uh, to your project. Uh, also, one more thing with regards to the structural considerations of this project is that they actually used a load-bearing steel frame as the main load-bearing structure for this uh, building. And this actually alleviates a lot of those pressures um, off of that weakened stack bonded wall, which is again something that you might want to consider when implementing uh, a lot of stack bonded masonry in your projects. So, moving a little bit further, we have combination bonds. And combination bonds are when you use a different type of bonds uh, and you will combine them. And so, what this does essentially is to separate different sections of a building's facade. And what this does ultimately is to bring attention and to distinguish between different parts and to highlight different parts and different features of an external facade of the, uh, of the wall. Uh, and also, and again, I'm sure you're all familiar with the art of uh, concealing control joints and articulation joints and all that, but this actually gives you a very, very good opportunity to sort of hide that control joint in between that transition uh, from one masonry bond to another. And as you can see in that picture to your bottom right there, um, from that stretch of bonded masonry to that stack bonded masonry, just slapping in that control joint right between um, those two types of masonry bonds, it would look a lot more um, natural. Uh, and it doesn't look as unsightly as if, if, it, if there was a straight discontinuous um, cut in a stretch of bonded wall, for example. So uh, here is another project, Collins Street Docklands by Kawich Takata Architects, um, using bricks from PGH Brick and Pavers. We can really see how that combination bond uh, between the soldier core stack bond and stretcher core stack bond, um, it can really differentiate and highlight those textures um, of different sections of the facade. Uh, and you can see that really clearly, well, perhaps really clearly, I'm not sure what it's like on your end, but um, on the bottom right hand photo, you can clearly see that uh, that section right below that band of the first floor. You can see that there is a different sort of coloration, different sort of texture in there, um, really highlighting a different section of that, uh, of that facade. Uh, or, again, I'll also like to highlight that 
the architects and the engineers here actually used a uh, steel beam to sort of act as the load bearing structure. Again, taking away and alleviating any sort of um, pressures off of that weakened stack point of masonry. So in this project, which is the Ivanhoe House, which Jack is going to talk a little bit about later, we can see that stack pointed masonry can be used in curved wall applications as well. Um, and this might sound funny because, you know, curved walls are typically a more um, complex construction. And because of that weakened state of a stack pointed masonry wall, it might not seem fitting for you to um, implement this sort of masonry bond in this sort of configuration. Um, but I'm just here to say that even with these limitations, you can implement um, these type of constructions and you shouldn't really shy away from them. Uh, all you need to consider here is that when you're implementing those joint mesh, uh, also, sorry, those bed joint re uh, reinforcement requirements, you just need to make sure that those reinforcements are curved uh, along with the wall as well. Um, again, stressing that, you know, you don't have to shy away from uh, architectural features that you're not comfortable with, if you consult with your engineer, they will always, almost always find a way to, to figure out a, a workaround for your, for your problems and find an adequate solution. So here's back, uh, looping back to what I was talking about before about those, um, those custom bricks. And we can see here that, that you can use these custom bricks in textured stack bonded walls. Uh, in this project, but uh, Nan Primary School by Walter Brook Architects using bricks from Austral Bricks, you can see how the splayed custom bricks adds this sort of unique uh, texture to this wall, um, and it really—it's a really sort of playful effect. Really, um, it, it, the overall effect I I feel is that it's a little, it's a lot more tactile, um, and it really makes you want to sort of you know, run your hand along it as well. So again, just utilizing custom uh, masonry units with that stack bonding pattern can deliver you a different overall aesthetic. And uh, with the amount of custom bricks that you can make out there, I'm sure you can find one that suits you and suits your projects. So here's something, or here's a project that I'm sure you're familiar with if you attended the previous architectural webinar. Uh, and this is the this GB House by Renato Dettoria Architects using bricks from PGH Brick and Papers and also from the Moya Art Valley bricks. Uh, and here we can see a stack bonded bris soleil, which is when the bricks are turned on their sides to expose their, fail, uh, their, their sailor face. Uh, and this essentially takes advantage of the fact that some of the bricks have cores. Um, and using these cores, it allows for both light and air to sort of pass through it. Uh, and this, this, I feel, brings on a very sort of uh, light-hearted and, a, and it, really and it really opens up your interiors, but without detracting from the rigidity of what a brick wall should be. Uh, and this makes it, I believe, very perfect for interior walls uh, and for interior applications as well, especially if you're trying to open up uh, a house um, or the, oh sorry, the insides of a house without, um, you know, resorting to an alternative uh, walling system. Uh, here is another great project, uh, Naranga House by James Russell Architects, again using uh, bricks from PGH Brick and Pavers. Um, and here I'll just like to point out that the stack bonded masonry uh, actually has a very, very unique um, allowance for a very discreet use of lateral reinforcement. As you can see in that bottom right-hand photo there, you can see that to, in order to laterally, laterally reinforce um, the brick soleil wall, the brick soleil stack on the wall, uh, what the architects and engineers have done is essentially hide that lateral reinforcement uh, behind the vertical perpen joints where there is that thickness. Um, and this allows you to not like obstruct any sort of, sorry, doesn't allow, sorry, it doesn't uh, obstruct any of the cores. Um, so it, it allows for an unobstructed view of the outside. Um, and it really does, it's a really sort of, I would say it's, it, I would say it's a really sort of unique uh, solution. And it, it's, it's almost like a perfect solution uh, for this type of construction. Uh, I would again also like to highlight that with this configuration, 
you do let a lot of light through. And you can almost see, again, in that bottom right-hand photo, you can almost see the outside of the, uh, of the, well, the outside environment from within through that brick wall. Um, and even though it sort of provides an added sense of privacy, it doesn't detract from um, the external views of the house. So here in this slide, we actually get a glimpse of how um, stack bonded masonry can be used in, 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 in interior applications. Uh, and so in this project, uh, and I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize in advance, but Antica e Casina Pizzeria um, by Jenison Studio using uh, bricks from Austral Bricks. We can see in those two right hand photos there that that soldier core stack bonded masonry really adds to uh, a heightened, uh, well, really adds to the verticality of the interior and it sort of increases the, um, the ceiling space and it also increases the height of the overall rooms is, is what it feels like. Uh, and also to the image on your left there in that archway, in that corridor, that stack bonded masonry really sort of provides almost like a drawing, like an architectural drawing. Uh, it, those, those bed joints really sort of uh, play into the vectors and into the vanishing point that becomes the entrance to the, uh, the, the, the restaurant. Uh, and finally, again, I'll just very much like to stress that uh, there's almost always a workaround uh, in terms of structural requirements when it comes to masonry. And here you can see in this project, uh, the blue coat by Hans van der Heijen Architects in the United Kingdom, that a performance solution was adopted to utilize uh, stack bonded masonry whilst keeping it load bearing. And so what the engineers have done here um, in consultation with their architects is to essentially provide a pre-stressed reinforced concrete core and basically fusing that external facade, that double brick, stack bonded brick facade to that concrete core, allowing the entire system to be load bearing. Uh, and this again provides a unique solution to this project. And here as well, if you do choose to have um, these sort of performance solutions, you can also uh, sort of circumvent established uh, structural considerations like that bed joint reinforcement that I mentioned earlier. Just in this project, because they fused the brick into that concrete core, they basically didn't require any sort of bed joint reinforcing in that section and in those columns. Um, whereas if, sorry, whereas if in those columns without that core, you would have to still implement those uh, bed joint reinforcements. But what I'm basically trying to say is that you sh really shouldn't shy away from more ambitious architectural features. Um, if you consult with your structural engineers, they'll almost always find a suitable solution uh, whilst maintaining that vision that you may have. So I'm just gonna quick, quickly go through a, a summary before I pass it back to Jack um, of what I've just been talking about. First of all, we went through some of those structural considerations uh, for stack bonded masonry. Uh, and then we went through some of those types of stack bonded um, masonry designs. We have the header course, the stretcher course, and also the soldier course um, stack bonds. Um, but again, if you want to find out more, uh, our website has a tre an entire treasure trove of information, um, fact sheets, case studies, um, and also we have a YouTube channel. So if you do want to learn a little bit more about the engineering side of stack bonded wall design, please check that out. Um, again, all free uh, as our stance as an association. Um, but without further ado, I'll pass it back to Jack. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Perfect. Um, so now we're going to delve into a little bit about why stack bonding and why we might choose to go with these, you know, more interesting and more unique masonry bonds. Um, so firstly, one of the major benefits of using clay masonry in general is energy efficiency. 
Um, so for those of you who were in the second webinar a couple of months ago, um, you would know that obviously hit and miss screens um, have those perforations. However, with a stack bonded wall, you can create a solid unperforated masonry wall. Um, and because bricks are quite dense and because they're made from natural clay materials, you can actually achieve a really energy efficient wall and a really energy efficient design using masonry products whilst still getting the benefits of the geometric blame pattern. So for example, we can see here, this is the Hawaii Ambassador Shopping Center by Haim Charlie. And they've actually used multiple different colors of bricks from brick makers to create this sort of checkerboard pattern within the brickwork. But you still get that solid high thermal mass wall, which will actively make the interior space more comfortable, increasing the building's energy efficiency um, and reducing your space conditioning costs throughout the year. So it's a great way to create a visually striking wall that is incredibly energy efficient and sustainable. Again, in terms of acoustics, uh, this goes back to the high density and the high thermal mass of bricks, but because of their density, they have excellent acoustic properties, which makes them great for creating you know, soundproof and acoustically sensitive uh, internal spaces. So an example of this would be the Ian Potter Centre for Performing Arts um, by Peter Elliott Architecture and Urban Design. So they've actually used austral bricks here, and you can see they've actually turned some of the bricks to expose the cores, uh, to create a sort of playful pattern. However, behind this quite solid brick wall is actually a performance space um, that they've soundproofed, but they've used the bricks to create this really nice linear sort of patterned wall that also has the added benefits of soundproofing or providing additional soundproofing and additional acoustics um, to the spaces behind. So this goes back to what Matt was saying before about uh, internal applications. You know, if you want to create spaces that are quite soundproof, um, then stack bonded masonry or even masonry in general may be the solution that you would look for. And in terms of versatility, Obviously, we, can, we know that masonry is incredibly versatile. Bricks can be used in a high, vast amount of applications. Um, however, the same can also be said for stack bonded pattern masonry as well. So it's not only limited to your landscaping walls as we more commonly see it currently, but you can, as you've seen through some of the projects we've looked at, use it for exterior walls. You can also bring it into the inside of your space to create those sort of playful, textural, rich uh, feature walls. And you can even use custom bricks to create an added sense of tactility for your wall. Um, and looking at this project here, the Fat Yak Bar at Sydney Airport, um, somewhere where I'm sure we'd all like to be pretty soon, hopefully, um, traveling overseas, you can even, you know, through some clever design, make curved stack bonded walls. So you can see that they've actually oriented the bricks, um, exposing that soldier course. Um, through an inlay panel and they've created that sort of uh, really nice stack bonded pattern on that curved wall. And I think this goes back to your question, Sonia, as well, that you asked earlier about um, spacing for soldier, soldier core stack bonded walls. So the spacing would still remain the same as per AS3700 with regards to where you would put your um, horizontal bed joint mesh. Um, obviously, the height of the bricks would dictate, you know, how often you would have to put that spacing in, uh, but still in conjunction with AS3700, of course. Again, uh, you're not limited to size of bricks either. You can use different size bricks. Um, and again, provided you take into consideration your spacing of wall ties and uh, reinforcement, you can, you know, create some large spans of stack bonded masonry. Um, you can see here, this is a project in the United Kingdom that's got a steel frame uh, with stack on the brickwork inlaid around it. Um, and they've used, you know, 450 by 225 mil bricks um, to create this wall. I mean, you can see they've actually placed masonry reinforcement in every single bed joint, so at 225 mil spacing, and they've spaced their wall ties at 450 mil intervals. So this goes back to what Matt was saying earlier about having a bit of a play around and consulting with your engineer to see um, how your wall can solve some of these structural considerations. And again, extending upon that, 
Um, this is perhaps more attributed to concrete masonry, um, but stack bonded walls can be designed as load bearing, as, as Matt mentioned, um, provided that they're compliant with AS3700, or you reach that performance solution with your engineer. Um, but obviously, if we're looking to use concrete masonry um, through the Concrete Masonry Association of Australia, uh, who Think Group Australia is closely affiliated with, you can you know, actively reinforce the cores of hollow, uh, hollow blocks and still create that really nice gridded, you know, linear feel to your wall that emphasizes that verticality. And perhaps most importantly, obviously we want our architecture to look good. We want it to look interesting and we want it to achieve the effect um, on the user or on the occupant of the actual project. So depending on the aspect of your architecture you want to emphasize, you may choose to have an experiment with different uh, patterns, particularly stack bonding. And I think this project that you can see in the top right, um, Pass A Yang by Tribe Studio Architects, is a great example. Um, so they've used barrel bricks here, but they've had a bit of a play around with where they actually um, stack, stack them up in different patterns. They've used a bit of uh, stack bonding, they've used some stretcher bond, um, and they've even used a sort of arch uh, bonding towards the top of the A-frame roof there. Um, and this is all to sort of add that visual interest towards this sort of unique roof with those pop-out windows. And again, this goes back to what we've been mentioning before. You can use stack bonded bricks for added tactility. You get that gridded look almost like ceramic tiles. However, you get the added benefits of having that you know, rough texture um, due to the natural materials that the bricks are made out of. And you can see, you can combine this with a bunch of other materials, you know, to create something quite interesting that has a sense of textural richness to it. Um, just like this project, Bell Harbor by Shane Daniel Architects. So the white box at the bottom on the ground floor is actually stack bonded austral bricks um, that's sort of, you know, differentiated with other materials. But onto a few different and slightly, you know, more interesting and maybe uh, less you know, less popular and less common masonry bonds that you may not have seen before, but something to consider um, for your future projects. Um, this project here, the Suffolk Brick House by Satish Jassal, um, they've actually used a vertical stretcher bond for the main facade of the house for these uh, pop-out sections of the build. Um, and obviously, as the name suggests, it's a regular stretcher bonded wall um, that's actually just flipped 90 degrees. Um, and obviously, a wall like this um, can't be load bearing, so this is tied back to a structural frame. But this goes back to the idea that Matt mentioned before of how you choose to articulate your architecture. You know, you can choose different patterns to create different effects um, for, the, for the user. And obviously you can see here the vertical stretcher bond gives a sort of added sense of height um, to these sections of the project that's contrasted by that regular stretcher bond masonry that you can see on the right hand side in the middle of the world. Again, we can look at a basket weave bond. Um, so this is normally seen as a paving pattern and this is where you'll get two or three or four bricks and you'll sort of stack them together in a square and then you will get another square and flip it 90 degrees. And so you sort of get that sort of weave pattern forming in your brick architecture. Uh, but what you may not be aware of is that you can actually use this exact pattern that we normally see in pavers and you can slap it on a wall and create a really interesting, you know, dynamic facade. Um, so this is the Docklands project by Marcel Locke Architect in the Netherlands. And you can see it's, it's quite a tall project, you know, it's a couple of stories. And they've actually, you know, put this um, basket weave bond on the facade attached to a load bearing frame. But you can also see you will need to take into account um, the structural capability of this wall. Similar to a stack bonded wall with a basket weave bond, you still get those uh, vertical long running perpen joints, meaning that you will still have those same structural issues um, and a reduced bending capacity, which means you will need to consider where you place your horizontal reinforcement. Um, so, for example, you can see with those yellow lines there, the architects, uh, in consultation with their engineers, place reinforcement um, at every sort of three bricks or every basket weave course uh, in the build and tied it back to the frame. 
And again, this goes back to articulation and how you want to express your masonry. So with this project, the Mia Dorhol Apartments um, in Zabriskie Studio in Serbia, um, they actually wanted to break up the continuity of the vertical pilasters that supported um, the actual structure of the building. So what they've done is they've created soldier course stack bonded walls that sort of run the length horizontally around the building. Um, kind of similar to the Koichi Takata Collins Street Studio uh, project we mentioned before. So again, you can see here that these, this articulation is not limited to just Australia. You can see these projects globally and how they um, treat and how they articulate their building and you know, the sense of scale that that gives to these buildings. And once again, um, you can see that they've chosen to place their reinforcement um, at the top and bottom of that stack bond, and they've cleverly hidden it into the design of the building. So again, this comes down to how you would actually put that reinforcement um, in a way that it's sort of concealed, um, but considerate of the limitations of the brick. So, I sort of another one that's quite interesting to think about, similar to basket weave bond, would be a herringbone bond uh, brick wall. So obviously we know that herringbone uh, patterns are normally used in pavements, um, such as these really great projects here that have got some really vibrant colours. However, you actually can use a herringbone brick bond um, in an actual masonry walling system. So this is the aptly named Herringbone House uh, by Atelier Chan Chan in the UK. And once again, this is a non-load bearing wall um, just due to the limited capacity of a herringbone wall that's actually tied back into a steel frame. So again, this is a little bit trickier with regards to your wall tie treatment um, as to how you would tie these bricks into the wall. So that comes down to having that conversation with your engineer to see how you might treat those wall tie spacings for your frame um, and whether you would need to reduce those wall tie spacings as well, as Matt alluded to earlier. And finally, another one that's quite interesting to consider that's becoming more and more popular um, currently is having perpen free masonry. And what I mean by this is having brickwork where the bricks actually butt up against one another um, and you actually don't fill the perpen water joint um, at all. So this is Smart Design Studio um, in Sydney. This is their office. And in the bottom left image, you'll see that those bricks there, you can't really see any of the mortar. They've, pur they've purposely chosen a, a dark mortar that matches the bricks, um, but you really can't see those perpen joints in the bricks, which gives it a really nice sense of horizontality. Um, and again, on the top floor of the building, you can see they've actually adhered these white bricks uh, to a concrete catenary vault form. So they've actually put a precast concrete structure in and adhered the bricks to that. And again, you don't see those joints, which almost gives it, to me, it looks sort of like if you've seen Star Wars approaching light speed as you, you know, walk down this really awesome vault. So you, you get a different experience depending on how you treat your bricks. Just in terms of detailing as well, um, as Matt alluded to earlier, obviously clay masonry units, um, just due to their characteristics, they do absorb water um, whenever it rains or whenever they're exposed to water. So as with any walling system, uh, any masonry walling system rather, you need to properly detail to avoid moisture ingress, uh, which can affect the structure. So obviously ensure that, you know, you've got flashing to direct water out of your build um, and ensure that you've got weep holes where those flashings are aligned to, you know, make that water um, able to escape. Again, make sure that you have rebates in your slab, um, in your design, which again, you make sure that your frame, your structural timber frame or metal frame is not going to be exposed and compromised um, by any water. Um, and again, you know, your engineer uh, will make sure that these requirements um, are met as well, but something to be aware of. The same can be said, obviously, for windows. Uh, make sure you have weep holes as per AS 3700 and make sure that you've got flashing to direct water that would otherwise be exposed to that uh, window detail. Obviously, window sills as well um, get a lot of exposure to wind-driven rain. 
So making sure that your window sills again direct outward from the build um, so the water doesn't pile on those because otherwise you'll get issues like efflorescence um, and salt attack and, and fretting. So again, something to be aware of. And as Matt, Matt mentioned before, obviously um, clay masonry move, uh, they tend to expand over time as they absorb water. So we do need to take into account that control joints will need to uh, form a part of that design depending on the length of our masonry. Um, but again, the other advantage of stack bonding in particular uh, as you can see here in the three parts house by Architects EAT, um, they've actually hidden or sort of exposed rather, I would say, the control joint to show a separation between two different types of stack bonds. So with the continuous perpend joint, you get the benefits of being able to implement this control joint really easily. So we're just gonna quickly run through Ivanhoe House um, by Cavalleris Urban Design, so KUD. Um, and show a little bit about sort of some of the construction that you uh, might see for these stack bonding projects. So this house is located in Melbourne, um, and the brief was to create a family home around a courtyard. So the architect consulted with the homeowner, and they actually wanted to go for a sort of almost retro, retrofitted look in modern Australia. So they've actually chosen Spanish La Paloma bricks through Austral bricks. Um, which is this really nice off-white colour, and they've almost created this, you know, 50s Palm Springs in Victoria feel with the architecture. Uh, but they wanted to sort of create this really nice, clean, crisp stack bond with the colour of the bricks. Um, and so because the site had a large elevation from front to back, they actually decided to elevate the brickwork above the ground, so it almost hovers um, above the ground as a hovering form. Um, so then you can see in that right hand image or both images actually you can see the um, steel shelf angle that would support the brickwork um, and so for example this is something that you know ancon uh, may deal with as well to give you some masonry accessories and once again you can see those wall ties um, in the build and how they're spaced out um, to connect the stack bonded brickwork to the load bearing timber frame so the front facade was like fully clad in stack bonded brickwork to create really long spans. Um, and you can see the effect of this is that you get this really cool sort of portal entrance to the home. Um, so by emphasizing the verticality with these stack bonded bricks, it, it gives a sense of grandeur to the project. And again, just in terms of some of the detailing um, for the project, you can see the edge rebate um, highlighted in pink there between the brickwork um, and the structural frame that allows your moisture diversion. And as Matt alluded to, obviously with stack bonded brickwork, you need to ensure that the brickwork construction is of a high quality. Um, you know, the slightest deviation in joint thickness will actually break away from the visual effect. Um, so make sure you've got a contractor that is highly experienced. So uh, in this case, it would be, be fair of us to give a shout out to Solid Brick Contractors um, for really making this project shine. And again, you can see the same detailing conventions still apply. You can see those weep holes, you know, cleverly hidden away there at the bottom of the wall to allow for that moisture diversion. And once again, the idea of continuing the brickwork into the interior to, you know, continue that feel of modern retro almost um, into this family home but it's a great way of you know connecting the exterior to the interior um, of your house and this is the finished project um, like it's very very visually striking and it you know immediately is noticeable just due to you know how different it is um, in its context um, through the use of these really nice striking bricks so just in terms of brick floors as well, as well while we're on the subject of um, brick bonds and patterns, um, obviously this is something that you may consider um, for some of your projects. Uh, but keep in mind that, you know, obviously the weight of the bricks will be something that you'll need to think about um, and whether you inlay these on top of a concrete slab and how you treat these floors as well, how you detail them. Um, so keep in mind that you'll need to ensure your mortar joints remain that sort of uh, 13 to 7 mil, so that 10 mil um, consistency in AS3700. 
And depending on the scope and size of your brick floors, you may need to input um, a control joint. Um, however, the, the treatment is relatively similar um, to most paving applications and a combination of walling applications. And in terms of patterns, obviously you've got your running stretcher bond, um, most common, most popular, and the easiest to achieve. And you get that really nice continuity between interior and exterior. Um, secondly, you know, offset stack bond, which is similar to what we've been discussing today, but by sort of sliding a row of those bricks along half a course. So you get kind of a really nice breakup um, of the brick floor pattern, but you still get that sort of emphasis on vector lines drawing you along that brick floor, um, as you can see in this project on the right, Carlton Cloister by MRTM Architects. Um, you can see the bricks sort of direct you down that pathway. Um, and obviously doing this bond allows you to sort of place control joints um, in the vertical perpens of the masonry um, as you see fit. Once again, herringbone patterns, um, as we've mentioned before, these are incredibly popular and they create that really nice sense of visual interest um, and break away from sort of the linearity of a room. They create a sort of more fun, functional space. And you can sort of go a bit wild um, with your brick patterns, you know, uh, as if there's one takeaway from today, don't limit yourself to stack bonding, don't limit yourself to stretcher bond. You know, you can have a bit of a play around now, uh, particularly with computer software to create um, more complex patterns that are a little bit more interesting, um, like the Northern Park at Revley by Plan E Landscape Architects. Again, they've used a couple of different colors from brick makers to achieve uh, a slightly more interesting and, and playful look. But again, you know, why might we pick brick floors? Um, obviously, they have a sense of durability. Bricks are an incredibly durable and low maintenance material, uh, meaning that, you know, they'll last the test of time. Uh, compared against other flooring materials, such as hardwood and even ceramic tiles, um, bricks are incredibly cheap depending on um, your selection. So you can actively save money as well and still achieve that really nice sort of rustic modern look to your house. Um, and again, energy efficiency, we've talked about the thermal benefits and the thermal mass of bricks, and the same can be said um, for brick floors, you know, they can absorb heat uh, during the day and sort of through the thermal lag effect release that at night, giving you a sort of more comfortable interior space. And again, the last three, you know, rustic appeal, uh, the aesthetic and the connection that you can create with these, depending on, you know, the effect and the feel of your project. Brick floors combined with brick walls even, um, as you can see through this project, Henley Clays, um, you know, you can create a really nice flowing space that's really connected. Um, towards the end here, um, something else to consider um, and sort of the takeaway that we want you to have from this, uh, from this webinar. Um, Camilla Block in our, in our Think Brick podcast um, said that brick is like a really, really good pet. You know, it can do anything you want it to do because it's, it's handheld, it's small, it's flexible, uh, and, and it can almost be like a pixel and it can do any drawing. Um, so I would encourage you to, you know, play with this idea that brick can do a little bit more than what we all think it can. It, it can create these visually striking patterns. I um, mean, it can create these really interesting uh, masonry bonds. So you can see on the right, that project is, is one in France. Um, but you can also see a local example in Australia, the Barossa Valley Chocolate Company by JBG Architects. You know, they've used different colour, different coloured barrel bricks um, to decorate a chocolate chocolate shop. And it, it almost looks like a truffle or, or flowing chocolate. So, you know, you can have a bit of a play around depending on your project and, and create some artwork even with bricks. Um, so further information. We have fact sheets on our website specifically on brick floors and staff bonding. I would highly encourage you to check them out, download them. They're a handy resource to just have. It's, it's a nice double page spread um, and it's something great to just have a quick look at for inspiration and information. We also have case studies as well, um, which feature some more interesting masonry examples featuring some really cool accessories and really cool engineering solutions. Um, I know that, you know, some of these use Ancon, one of our associate members, they use some of their masonry accessories. Um, so I would highly recommend checking these out. 
And again, on top of that, obviously we have um, additional resources such as manuals. Um, and we also have CPD courses as well um, through the Points Build platform. Um, so you can actually you know, have a look at those and obtain um, CPD points um, through looking at some you know, techniques and information on masonry systems. Um, so I highly encourage that to have a quick look at. And just sort of finalizing now, um, please feel free to follow us on all of our social media channels. We're incredibly active on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, we even have a TikTok now as well. So just sort of spreading the word on some different and fun ways that masonry um, can be used um, in Australia, but also globally as well. So definitely check those out for information and inspiration. Um, and keep a lookout as well. Um, episode four of our architecture webinar series will be launching in the new year. So we'll have an episode in late February. Um, but again, this is where I would once again encourage you to follow us to uh, obtain that information and to also find out who our Think Brick Award winners are for 2021. Um, I highly encourage you to check that out. Um, so with all that being said, turn our camera back on. Do we have any questions? We had a couple, yep. but uh, I think I answered them. Okay, I'm just trying to see our mouse is playing now. Oh. All right, that's gonna. Oh, there you go, that working now. Bear with me, everyone. That's right, we'll go off on. Yeah, we'll go off the laptop. Um, yeah, so did, did anyone else have any questions um, from today's session? I think Matt's answered, from what I can see, it looks like Matt's answered everyone's questions. Um, but if you do have any other questions, I would highly encourage you to. Um, chuck them in the chat right now and we'll, um, we'll, we'll verbally, verbally answer them for you. I think Matt's going to put out a poll as well now as well for you. Um, if you're interested in having our technical team um, present to you know, your architectural or engineering team, um, we can definitely arrange a customised free personal presentation for you. And we can go through um, you know, a bunch of different masonry systems, a bunch of you know, hit and miss walls, curved walls, um, you know, masonry design in general. Um, so as I said before, we're an industry association um, and we like to just make it easier to build with brick, block and pavers. So you know, any way that we can assist that for your teams, um, we're more than happy to go for. Otherwise, that being said, we'll probably stay in the um, stay in the demo room for a couple more minutes. Um, so if you do have any more questions, feel free to chuck them in and we'll answer them. Um, but otherwise, to, to everyone else, if you, if you don't have any more questions, um, thank you for coming along. Thank you for learning a little bit more um, about masonry and about brick. And I would highly encourage you all to, you know, think brick in the future and, and challenge Challenge what a brick can do, because um, I think you know we all surprise ourselves with with how we can treat bricks and, and what we can create with them. So I, I wish everyone a lovely rest of your morning or afternoon, um, depending on where you are. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. No worries. Thanks, Eve. Thanks, Gary. Shane. Thanks, Tamara. Thanks, Ashley. Once again, yeah, if, if anyone has any further questions, um, you know, feel free to get in contact us, with us via phone or email and um, we'll be sure to help you out where we can. Perfect. All righty, for everybody else that's still here, we're about to close the session. So um, have a lovely day and um, yeah, we'll hopefully see you soon in the next webinar. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.